Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. Today I'm actually flying out to Puyallup, Washington for the Sew Expo, so I thought it would be fun to share another new to me notion that I discovered from the Taylor Seville Company. They reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to try some of their sewing notions and share them with my students in Puyallup. So they sent me a box of some things and I just want to talk about a few of their notions that I think are absolutely amazing. So in front of me you can see here I have um, magic clips. Super excited about these magic clips. If you follow along with me you know that I am a wonder clip lover and wonder clips and magic clips do the same thing but I want to talk about the differences in them and why I think these magic clips have some really cool advantages over the wonder clips. Also, I opened up one of their seam rippers and I always have a seam ripper at the ready because I'm always, um, <laughs> you know, I'm always needing it to take stuff out when I'm sewing at top speed. And I just wanna say the seam ripper is really comfortable to hold. I don't know if you can see this on the video, but this whole blue section of the seam ripper is rubberized and it's very comfortable to hold. Also, the the blade is very sharp and it does come with a safety cap, but I do love holding the seam ripper. The handle is very comfortable and it's also very sharp and very easy to work with. The other thing they sent me was this Taylor's chalk. Now if you're old school and you have these little triangles of chalk around, you probably know that they're they're very cool and very convenient for marking lines, but one thing that can happen with these triangles is that they can become dull. Oops. Um, so this case that comes with it is very nice because the back of the case is texturized and you can actually use it to sharpen your edge to make nice thin marks. Look at how thin that, those marks are. Because when you use chalk, you want accuracy. So being able to have a nice skinny edge um, helps you make a nice skinny line. And the fact that you can use the bottom of the case to sharpen your edge means you will always have a nice skinny line when you use this Taylor's chalk. So I really like this. I'm gonna be using it and I'm gonna be bringing it with me to Puyallup because it comes in with this nice convenient case so it won't get all gross in my notions bag. Super excited about that. And then I'm sure you've probably already heard of magic pins. These pins are so cool. I usually go for glass head pins because they don't melt when you're pressing seams with the pin, you know, inserted into the seam or whatever it is you're pressing. Um, these plastic ends or handles are heat resistant so you can still iron them and because of their very um, sort of ribbed elongated grip, you can easily take these in and out. I've really been enjoying working with these magic pins. I will tell you that I purchased some before they sent me some magic pins. I did purchase some quilting pins and you can see the difference here. I'm just going to stick them in this fabric so you can see how long they are comparatively speaking. This pin here is one and seven sixteenths and the quilting pin is one and three quarters. So you can see the difference in um, length on these pins. I will tell you, I know you've probably heard longer is better, but in pins that's not necessarily the case. If you're garment sewing, the smaller pins or the shorter pins are much better to use because they won't bend. Okay, so if you're trying to just use, you know, these longer quilting pins 
um, to pin heavy layers of fabric, like especially if you're working on a waistband or something with lots of layers, these longer pins will bend and then you'll have to sort of, you know, recycle them because they're not good if you've bent them. So the shorter ones, um, while they're the same diameter, meaning the same sharpness and the, the pin itself is the same width, the shorter length is more stable and I'm having a much easier time using those to pin a variety of garment projects. Um, so I just finished two pairs of Sorsha Classic Slim trousers, which I will be um, bringing with me to Puyallup. I'm so excited. Um, and when I was working on the waistbands, these shorter magic pins were so cool to work with. These pins come in a variety of lengths and for a variety of purposes, from silk pins all the way to long arm quilting pins. And the grips are either comfort grip or ultra grip, which has some ridges that are wider than the graduated uniform ridges on the comfort grip pins. So there are specialty pins for whatever sewing you might be tackling, and I really cannot say enough about them. I have this little embarrassing story. I was working with one of my friends, and he was he came over to help me fit or balance a bodice top I was working on, and the way he prepares his muslins is he actually pinned the layers together. And I had a box of old quilting pins, and he literally could not get the pins to pierce the fabric. And we're talking about just regular muslin fabric. It was really embarrassing. So I ran out after that experience and that's what prompted me to get some of these um, magic pins. And I am never going back. I am going to be a magic pin lover forever. So that's what I wanna say about the magic pins. What I really want to talk about today are the Taylor Seville Magic Clips. They come in three sizes, large, small, and extra small. And the cool thing about these clips is that they are made of surgical grade stainless steel. They're very, um, the clip part itself is very thin so you can sew over them. So the biggest difference between a Magic Clip and my other friend, the Wonder Clip, I'm just gonna show you them here together. Let me put them here. You can see that if I have um, an edge clipped, this shaped top edge of the clip here, um, I can't sew over that, but you can see I can sew over this very thin metal area and the, another difference is if you look at the look at it from the side here the the wonder clip top and bottom is equal whereas on the magic clip the bottom clip which you cannot see because it's going to be underneath your fabric doesn't extend out as far so there's no way it can get in your way so i want to show you a few very cool things that you can do with these clips so I'm kicking myself because I mentioned that I finished some of my Sorsha Classic Slim Trousers. And one of the things I was doing was the waistband. So you can see what I have here is, just imagine this is a, um, a little waistband sample. So this would be the pants. This is the right side of the waistband. And if I flip it over, this is the wrong side of the waistband or the waistband facing. And what I wanna show you here is, if you're working with a fabric that is difficult to crease or heavy, you know, heavy weight, so it's bulky, using these clips to sort of, what I want to say, beat it into submission with the clip, that's exactly what it's going to do. So you can do all of your pressing and folding and getting your, um, you know, getting the edges into position. And then by putting these clips on, what it's going to do is it's going to basically make the fabric bend to your will. So it's, these clips have a really um, secure, like I can't shake them off um, grip. And so it will cause the fabric to agree with 
the shape it's in when it's clipped. So it's almost like using a clapper where you actually beat the fabric into submission. But this is something I like to do when I'm planning my sewing projects. I will get my waistband all prepped, all pinned and clipped into place, and then I'll put it aside and work on something else. And when I come back to do it later, it's much easier to sew accurately because the fabric is basically in position. So what I want to show you here is I'm going to take out this, you know, take out these clips just to show you. Now see, the way I do my waistbands is I tuck, so here's the, let me just open this up to show you. So this is the inside of, this is the pant, this is the waistband, this is the waistband facing. I press it all down the waistband and facing so it's even with the center front edge of the pant and then I fold it down again. Now what I want to do especially on the side where the zipper is right at the top of the seam I like to fold this under like this and sort of put the seam allowance of the facing underneath the folded center front edge of the waistband. So I can use these clips to help push it in. So because they're so skinny, you can see here, I can use it to help get it into position by pushing it in. And then once it's in position, I can clamp it there. And once it's clamped down, you can see everything is nice and neat and ready to sew. And then, of course, also I have um, clips on the top oops, to help hold that top edge of the waistband and facing. And I can clip this, and that keeps it secure until I'm ready to sew. So that's one of the uses. Um, and just the other thing I want to say to you is, taking this off now, I had this clipped to prepare for this video, and you can see it's not falling apart. And that's because it's been forcibly held together by those clips for a few hours. So use your clips to encourage your fabric to go or bend or fold in the direction you want it to, and sort of use this with a little bit of time to help make everything easier to sew in the end. So that's one of the things I'm using these for. Another thing you can use these for is to help when you're trying to match seams. So if you're sewing two pieces of fabric together that have a seam and you want the seam to match, if you use one of these clips to hold the seam right, you know, hold them together, what you can do is you can literally peek under there and make sure they're matching. So you, I can see that my seams are matching. Okay, and now let's go to the sewing machine and I'll show you a few other things that you can do with these clips on the machine. All right, so I'm just gonna first show you here how I can easily sew and make these two seams match because I've got that clip there. So I'm just going to start sewing. And as I come to the seam, I'm going to just stitch right over the clip. Now notice, I can stitch right over the clip without taking it out. So that means my seam is staying put. All right, so let's take a look at this now. See how perfectly that is matched? Okay, so use these clips to match your seams. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about um, with these clips is that they have seam allowance guidelines on them. And you can see here, the small clip has quarter inch and half inch guidelines and the extra small has quarter inch. Now the the marking on the clip itself 
gives you the actual seam allowance. So if I clip this at a quarter inch, lining up the guide line with the edge of my fabric, you can see it lines right up with the quarter inch seam allowance that I drew on this fabric. And over here, I can clip the half inch guide line, which corresponds right with the bend in the clip there. Um, and you can see that that also gives you an accurate half inch. Now, the one thing is, if you want to sew a half an inch or a quarter inch seam allowance and you want to use these clips as a guide, you have to back them off just a little bit because you need some room for your needle to sew on the line. You don't want to try to play chicken with the end of that clip. You want to give yourself some space. So what I do, what I've been doing is I've been backing it up halfway between, let's say, the quarter and the half inch mark on the small clip. So it gives me an eighth inch breathing room. So as I'm sewing along, I keep an eye on my needle plate for the seam allowance printed on there. But then I also have the visual guide knowing that my stitching line is going to be an eighth of an inch from the end of the clip. And I can do that with the half inch seam allowance. And I can also do it with the quarter. I'll just back it up so that it's halfway up to the quarter inch. And I know I will sew an eighth of an inch away. So let's go back to the sewing machine and I will show you how this works. All right, and just for fun, I'm going to put one of my wonder clips on here as well. So we'll see how that works out. All right. All right, so let's stitch along. Well, first we'll stitch along the half inch line. And notice when I get to it, see how I can stitch right over the clip. I started out this video using my full width clear presser foot because I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. But using a super wide presser foot while you're also trying to sew close to the clip can cause you to need to kind of hold on to it as it goes through. But if you use a narrower um, presser foot, it just, and you're sewing really an eighth of an inch from the end, notice that that just slides right over. I don't need to um, hold anything and it gives me an accurate half inch. Now let's segue down to the quarter here. So I'm at a quarter inch. And look what's happening to my wonder clip. It's getting in the way. So I would have to remove it to keep going. Now as I get to my magic clip, again, you can see I can just stitch right over it. Let's look and see how accurate we were. All right, you can see I got really accurate seam allowances here and I didn't have to take the clips off of the fabric. So think about when you're working with hard to sew fabrics that shift away from each other, like velvets and you know anything with a nap or things that are slippery, different kinds of silks and other things that might be a little bit more challenging to sew. If you can keep the clip on and stitch right past it, that's going to help you get a more accurate seam allowance. So even if you're not using them for the seam allowance, they will still help you sew more accurately because you don't have to remove them from the edge of the fabric. So I am super excited about these magic clips. I am in love with the magic pins and I want to hold the seam ripper all day long because of the soft rubber uh, grip near the blade. So I'm super excited about these things. Um, if you're heading out to Sew Expo, I wish you safe travels, and maybe I'll see you there. I actually hope to see you there. Um, if you're not coming to Sew Expo, I will be posting um, different things that are going on at Expo on both my Instagram and on my Facebook page, so um, you can kind of see what's happening. I'm kind of excited. If you have any questions or comments about any of these notions, please post them below and I will help you. I'm also going to put a link to Taylor Seville so you can see the wide variety of notions they have because they have a lot more than just these things and you know you might want to check out the different kinds of or the different lengths of the magic pins and you can see the different um, 
Magic Clips. You can get them in both six packs, 12 packs, or some of them even come in 24 pack. So there's a variety of ways that you can purchase these things, but I will tell you, I used to be one of those sewers that was very minimalist. Like I didn't really see the need to spend money on different fancy notions and things. But as I start working with them now, I realize the time and energy that it saves me. Anything that can help me sew more accurately faster is well worth the investment. So I'm super excited about these things. And I just want to thank the Taylor Seville Company for sending them to me to try. And I will be sharing them at Expo. So, um, you know, when I get excited about something, I can't seem to stop talking about it. So that's what's going to happen. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Next week on Fit Tip Tuesday, I will be home. I'm coming home Monday night, but I'm going to have a um, another sewing success story and the title of it is scoop for the win so check that out next week on fit tip tuesday i just want to remind everybody there is no fab fit friday this week so i will be in puyallup at sew expo but i will see you the week after for that as well so thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day